This image was captured by NASA's Galileo spacecraft in June of 1996, and unless stated otherwise, every single real image of Europa that will be shown in this video is from this spacecraft. So this false color image nicely showcases huge lines scattered all over Europa's water ice surface. This is an enhanced color view of these thick lines. They are called the bands, and they can be many hundreds of kilometers long. Possibly these bands contain salts, but also maybe carbon-based molecules that reacted with sunlight and turned slightly red. If these possibly carbon-based molecules come from the ocean that sits below, then this is good news for the existence of life, as all life on Earth is carbon-based because it is an exceptional atom for building complex molecular structures necessary for life. However, as of now, it isn't exactly known how these bands form, and whether or not the color, and with that the molecules that they have, come from the huge ocean below, or from somewhere outside. This is Europa in natural color. This image was captured by NASA's Juno spacecraft in September of 2022, and it shows a pretty nice view of the bands, and also the ridges that stand tall compared to the surface. Some of these ridges were captured with a very high level of detail by the Galileo spacecraft, particularly this one at a resolution of about 20 meters per pixel. And what is shown is a ridge that stands 300 meters above the surrounding floor. It has this central mini depression surrounded by two small ridges. Next to this large ridge is a terrain filled with much smaller ridges overlapping each other. So how did all of these ridges form? Well, it isn't exactly known what the exact mechanism of formation is. Although there is one idea that underpins nearly all possible explanations, and that is that there is a subsurface ocean with active heating. The salty subsurface water ocean of Europa can conduct electricity, which explains why Europa has an induced magnetic field. A subsurface ocean also explains why we don't see many craters on Europa. They are being constantly erased by the constantly moving water ice crust layer, which floats on top of a massive ocean. Despite Europa itself being about 4.5 billion years old, the surface is estimated to be about 100 million years old. According to NASA, the ice crust is probably about 20 kilometers thick, while the ocean layer is 100 kilometers thick so there is probably a lot more liquid water on Europa than on Earth. And below Europa's water layer sits the huge rocky mantle and iron core that is much bigger than the water layer. Considering that Europa's density of 3 grams per centimeter cubic is much closer to the density of rock than to the density of water, it makes sense that there is much more rock. Still, all of the water is concentrated at the top because it got separated and then floated to the top during the formational stages when there was a lot of heating. So the internal composition of Europa is very different at the top compared to the one that the Earth has, where instead of a water ice crust floating on liquid water, there is rock crust floating on liquid rock. Because of that, ridges, like the ones on Europa, simply don't exist on Earth. At least not in such a quantity, not even close. One of the closest features on Earth, in terms of resemblance to Europa's ridges, is this incredibly linear mountain range found in the midst of the Pacific Ocean. It stretches for at least over 1,000 kilometers. It also stands about 1,000 meters above the surrounding floor, so three times the height of tall ridges on Europa. But a zoomed-in view still reveals that this is not a ridge with a central mini-depression, and it is not nearly as geometrically shaped as the ridges of Europa, so the formational process must be different to some extent. Now, it could be that Europa's ridges form through the collision of plates. That's how most mountains form on Earth, at least that's a major component of the formational process. So maybe that process on Europa could also create the ridges. Another explanation is that it's water seeping through the linear cracks in the surface, and over time as more of it solidifies and builds up, these ridges can maybe form. Still, the exact mechanism of formation isn't known. It is thought that Europa always faces Jupiter with one side, 
because it needs the same amount of time to rotate around itself as it does to go around Jupiter. This means that it is tidally locked. And this is not unique to Europa, as all known major moons in the solar system are also tidally locked. But it turns out, Europa might not actually be fully tidally locked. And what is specifically meant by that is that since the icy crust of Europa is detached from the rocky mantle, because it is separated by the ocean, it is also maybe sort of free-floating on that ocean, and it can maybe move on its own independently. That could maybe then explain why the ridges are not only seen on the side that faces Jupiter, but all throughout Europa. As the crust slowly rotates, different sides of Europa are facing Jupiter, and that then causes the tides to act throughout all of Europa's surface, which then also possibly creates the ridges all throughout Europa's surface. Specifically, the types of ridges which are used as sort of evidence of this independent crust movement are the cycloidal cracks, which, although the name implies that there are elongated holes in the surface, they just appear to be ridges. Despite that, they are a very specific kind of ridge which forms these connected half circles. Europa, unlike Earth and many other geologically active objects, doesn't have tall mountains. It is one of the smoothest objects in the solar system overall. However, a lack of large mountains shouldn't be interpreted that the surface is smooth on a small scale, and or that it lacks features. It is only smooth on a large scale. This right here is the highest resolution image obtained of the surface of Europa so far. This topmost image is at a resolution of 6 meters per pixel, while the rest 7 are at 12 meters per pixel. There are not many shadows in these images, as they were obtained when the sun was almost directly overhead, so the different colors are due to the surface itself being colorful. And these images show just how rugged the surface of Europa is on a small scale. Hills and ridges are everywhere. And this is probably representative of how most of Europa is in terms of how rugged it is. Still, some small sections like this one reveal large smooth areas. According to NASA, it is thought that they formed through pulling apart and sliding of the icy surface. This is a very obvious sign of a very active surface. This region in particular also shows exceptional geological activity. These types of regions are called chaos, for a very obvious reason. They have the typical Europa terrain, which is filled with ridges everywhere, but in these regions there are polygonal blocks where areas of pre-existing ridges started shifting. The blocks are either low-lying, or they are even sometimes protruding, like in this image. These regions have been interpreted as areas where there is an unusual amount of heat, which then allowed for chunks of the surface to detach and move around. Another peculiar feature of chaos regions is that they typically stand some 300 meters above the surrounding regions. According to this global geologic map of Europa, chaos regions, which are displayed in green colors, take up a massive amount of space. In terms of surface area, they are the second largest terrain type after plains. Although it should be mentioned that the plains too are filled with ridges and hills. This geologic map also reveals how much Europa is lacking in craters. They are still there of course, just not a lot of them. They are represented by the yellow and orange color. The one that sticks out on this map is the crater called Puel. This impact crater is 40 kilometers in diameter, but according to NASA, the bright icy ejecta from the crater extends around 1000 kilometers in all directions. So it covered a massive part of the much darker surface. It is estimated to be the youngest crater over 20 kilometers in diameter on Europa with estimates putting its age at 18 million years or younger. This crater is called Tyre. It is a multi-ring crater stretching for more than 100 kilometers. And just like many other craters of Europa, it doesn't have a protruding rim with a tall central peak. This indicates that the surface relaxed and turned a lot more flat due to the fact that there is a massive ocean that sits below. So clearly the ridges, small smooth areas, chaos regions and flat craters 
these are all signs of great geological activity. So one would expect some evidence of current activity, like plumes that shoot water vapor out of the surface. They were detected very clearly by NASA's Cassini spacecraft on a much smaller moon of Saturn called Enceladus. But no such clear evidence currently exists for Europa. One indication that they are still happening is the Hubble Space Telescope capturing this image of Europa in 2014. The close view of Europa is placed on top of the Hubble image, and we can seemingly see something very large and bright protruding, possibly a plume that reached heights of well over 100 kilometers. Another piece of evidence of somewhat recent activity is from this image captured by Juno in September of 2022. We can see a circular depression, and right next to it is this flowing pattern. Plume activity is a sign of great heating events happening in the ocean. Quite possibly, there are volcanoes on the floor of the ocean. And with volcanoes come hydrothermal vents, which provide heated water. They exist on Earth, and they are filled with life, even at extreme depths of several thousands of meters below the surface. It could be that, like on Earth, the possible hydrothermal vents of Europa are also like islands of densely packed alien life. It very much makes sense that Europa would have volcanoes and hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean, considering just how much tidal heating it has from its proximity to Jupiter. As it is orbiting the gas giant, it is also at different points further or closer to Jupiter. This then causes the Moon to be slightly stretched at times, which produces friction and thus heat within the interior. Jupiter's closest major moon, Io, has lots of volcanoes. Even immense volcanic plumes were detected by the New Horizons probe. It is the most volcanically active object in the solar system. So even if Europa, the second closest major moon, has just a small part of that volcanic activity, that still means that oceanic volcanoes, and with that places where there is plenty of hot water, exist. So far, the Voyager, Galileo, and Juno are the three spacecrafts which returned high-quality images of Europa. Now, Pioneer 10 and 11 did also pass through the Jovian system in early 70s before all of these spacecrafts. However, the quality of images captured of Europa isn't even comparable to the images captured by the later three spacecrafts. Currently, by far, the Galileo spacecraft returned the greatest amount of images of Europa. And according to NASA, it also did the closest flyby in January of the year 2000, approaching the Moon at a distance of 351 kilometers. The Juno spacecraft, however, did pretty much match the record, approaching the Moon at 352 kilometers in September of 2022. Currently, things are looking very good when it comes to the future exploration of this Moon. NASA's Europa Clipper is specifically going to study this Moon. It should launch in October of 2024 and arrive on Europa in 2030. On top of that, the European Space Agency already launched its own spacecraft in April of 2023, which is aimed to study Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. It is predicted to arrive in the Jovian system in 2031. These two probes are just two steps closer towards the goal of eventually drilling into the surface and launching a probe into the ocean of Europa so that we can finally see what's actually going on there.